Okay, uh, welcome folks. And uh, we'll do this session, just the sadhana, and uh, we'll do some Lama and prayers at the beginning and uh, just really try and reconnect now, weaving in some of the things that we've learned from previous sessions. And so just gently getting ready into the space. And settling into the posture. And gradually bringing your focus to the breath, letting surface distractions settle. And keeping the focus on the breath, not too tight, not too loose. And gently bring into your mind some of the conversations we've been having about the guru, the deity, and our own potential. All having some kind of Manjushri ness. So that this archetypal quality of perfected wisdom and the personification of it that we relate to as a person who gave us the empowerment. And the fact of our own mind's lack of inherent existence, meaning it's changeable, it can be developed. We take all of these ideas into our motivation and we'll use calling the guru from afar to deeply connect with them. Lama, think of me. Lama, think of me. Lama, think of me. The wisdom of all Buddhas, one taste with the Dharmakaya, is itself the ultimate nature of all kind Lamas. I beseech you, Lama, Dharmakaya, please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. Wisdom's own illusory appearance, the conqueror with seven branches, is itself the ultimate basis of emanation of all kind lamas. I beseech you, Lama Sambhogakaya, please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. The play of various emanations suiting the dispositions of the many to be subdued is itself the behavior of the Sambhogakaya of the kind lamas. I beseech you, Lama Nirmanakaya, 
Please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. The play of the inseparable three kayas appearing in the form of the Lama is itself one with the very essence of all kind Lamas. I beseech you, Lama, the inseparable three kayas, please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. All the infinite, peaceful, and wrathful yidams are also the Lama's nature. And since no yidam exists apart from the kind Lama, I beseech you, Lama, who comprises all yidams, please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. The ordinary form of all Buddhas arises in the aspect of the Lama. Therefore, no Buddhas are observed apart from the kind Lama himself. I beseech you, Lama, who comprises all Buddhas, please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. The very form of all conqueror's wisdom, compassion, and power arises as the Lama. Therefore, the supreme Arya lords of the three types are also the kind Lama himself. I beseech you, Lama, who combines three families in one, please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. The hundred, five, and three types, however many are elaborated, are the Lama. The pervasive master in whom they are all included is also the Lama. I beseech you, Lama, as master of all the types, please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. The creator of all Buddhas, Dharma, and Sangha is the Lama. The one who combines all three refuges is the kind Lama. I beseech you, Lama, whose presence combines all refuges, please guide me always without separation in this life, future lives, and the bardo. Thinking of how the actual form of all Buddhas arises in the aspect of the Lama and mercifully guides me, reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of how you show the excellent, unmistaken path to me, an unfortunate, wretched being, abandoned by all the Buddhas, reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of this excellent body, highly meaningful and difficult to obtain, and wishing to take its essence with unerring choice between gain and loss, happiness and suffering, reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of the experience of not knowing what to do when the great fear of death suddenly descends upon me, reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of the experience of just now suddenly separating from all the perfections of this life and going on alone, reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of how the suffering of hunger and thirst without a drop of water is directly experienced in the unfortunate credit realm reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of how very repulsive and wretched it is to become a foolish, stupid animal and what it would be like to experience it myself reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of a refuge to protect me from this since I am now about to fall into the wretched states of bad migration reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of how white and black actions are experienced and how to practice thorough and precise engagement and restraint reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of a method to escape this prison of endless existences, the source of all suffering, reminds me of you, Lama. Thinking of the plight of my pitiful old mother's pervasive as space, fallen amidst the fearful ocean of samsara and tormented there, reminds me of you, Lama. Therefore, Lama, please bless me to generate in my mental continuum effortless experience of the profound three principles of the path and the two stages. Please bless me to strive in one pointed practice of the three trainings with the intense thought of renunciation in order to reach the secure state of liberation. Please bless me to train in the precious Supreme Bodhicitta with special attitude taking responsibility to liberate all migrators by myself alone. Please bless me to follow after the ocean of conquerors with the will to cross to the very end of the great waves of deeds of the conqueror's sons. Please bless me to realize the supreme view, free of extremes, in which emptiness and dependent arising, appearance and emptiness complement each other. 
Please bless me quickly to generate the experience of taking the three kayas into the path, ripening the bases of birth, death, and bardo. Please bless me to arise as the illusory divine body itself, the play of the four joys and four emptinesses, the wind and mind absorbed in the central channel. Please bless me to meet the ultimate Lama, the bare face of my innate mind, with the covering of perception of true existence and perceiving it as true, removed. Please bless me to be one with your three secrets, Lama, in the vast Dharmakaya of great bliss, which has exhausted the elaborations of the two obscurations. In short, please abide inseparably in the center of my heart until the great enlightenment, and mercifully bless me, the child, to follow after you, the father. Lama, think of me. Lama, think of me. Lama, think of me. And so we just connect with those ideas. And any that we don't resonate with, we can set aside for now. And those that have touched our hearts, we can revisit and integrate. Thinking in particular, may we meet this ultimate definitive Lama, the bare face of our innate mind, with the covering of perception of true existence and perceiving it as true, removed. And we begin. Namo Guruja Vagi Sharya. I make humble obeisance to you, great Tsongkhapa, personification of Manjushri in human form with all the marks and signs of perfection. Your magnificent attainments were nurtured in the matrix of motherly method and wisdom combined of which the vibrant syllable D is an embodiment. Sipping the nectars of the profound teachings, directly from Manjushri's masterly eloquence, you realize the heart of wisdom. Inspired by your example, I will now set out a description of the steps for actualization of Manjushri, the Bodhisattva of wisdom, in accord with your realization. And then before we take refuge, we can do the practice of imagining all sentient beings doing this practice with us or ourselves doing this practice on behalf of them. So imagine at your left side are all your female presenting relatives, mothers or mother figures, whether living or dead whether you have good relationship with them or not. To the left. Daughters and nieces, aunts, grandmothers, sisters. And to the right, your male presenting relatives, father or father figure, whether living or dead, whether you had good relationship with him or not, and all your other male presenting relatives, grandfathers and sons, nephews and brothers, spreading out to your right.
in front of you are the people that you have difficulty with, whether those that are actively in your life or those that you just have a memory of. Imagine them in the space in front, those who have harmed you or harmed those you love, those you have aversion toward. And then behind you are your friends, those you have great affection for, for whom it's easy to be with, where love flows naturally and easily, spreading out behind you. Whether they're still in your life or not, And all around them are strangers. All the other human beings and non-human beings with whom you've had connection with, but maybe not recently or not often. Maybe not in this life. And you think all you sentient beings, whether I feel neutral, whether I feel attachment, aversion, whether I have love or not, all of you have Buddha nature. And my path relies upon you. And your path relies upon me. And may I be an agent of progress in the path of all of us. So imagine that you do this refuge prayer, everyone together. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By my practice of giving and other perfections, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from desire for friends and hatred for enemies. And so repeating those words and those ideas in your mind, add some Tonglen, giving and taking practice, just very gently on the in-breath connecting with compassion, on the out-breath connecting with love. In-breath compassion, out-breath love. Each cycle, minimizing your self-absorption, self-cherishing thought. Each round of breath, increasing your bodhicitta and cherishing of others.
and then shift. Om Sawa Shuddha Sawa Dhamma Sawa Shuddha Hum. And purify perception and emptiness. Thinking absolutely everything agent, action, object, myself, Manjushri, this practice are all empty of inherent existence, all dependently arise, which is why I can become Manjushri, which is why there is already Manjushri. If things were inherently existent, there could be no change. There would be only one perspective. Suffering would be our fate. But it's not. So imagine that all conceptions dissolve and see if you can imagine some sort of non-dual, non-grasping space. spacious possibilities. And then from emptiness, we visualize at my heart is my mind in the shape of an egg, its point upwards. Inside the egg on a full moon disc is an orange letter D. From which an infinite amount of light emits It fills the whole of my body, purifying all my negativities and removing all my obscurations accumulated since beginningless time. The light rays leave through my pores and become offerings to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, thereby delighting them. And this causes the blessings of the body, speech, and mind of these holy beings to dissolve into light that destroys the darkness of ignorance of all sentient beings, thus placing them in wisdom's illumination. And so just stabilize those steps. Visualizing clearly or at least imagining that this is the case.
The light rays then recollect into the syllable D. It transforms into light. My ordinary perception and my clinging thereto vanish. And I emerge as Venerable Manjushri, orange in color, with one face and two arms. My right hand brandishes a sword of wisdom in the space above me. At my heart, between the thumb and ring finger of my left hand, I hold the stem of an Utpala lotus. Upon its petals in full bloom, by my left ear, rests a volume of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I sit in full lotus posture and I'm adorned with precious ornaments for my head, ears, throat, and shoulders, as well as bracelets and anklets. Draped in a flowing mantle and skirt of exquisite silks, my hair is tied up in five knots and coils counterclockwise. Bearing an entrancing and serene smile, I sit amidst a mass of light radiating from my body. And so stabilize clear appearance of Manjushri. Yourself as Manjushri, if you have the empowerment or Manjushri above your crown if you don't. See how many details you can hold without squeezing your mind, without bringing tension. And as the figure becomes clear, feeling it as real, three-dimensional, made of transparent light, then if you have the empowerment, add divine pride that thinks, I am Manjushri. Take the result as the path. And without the empowerment, you think, I will be Manjushri, and Manjushri is with me. Develop strong aspiration. And then add a white om at the crown, a red ah at the throat, and a blue hum at the heart of Manjushri. 
enlightened body, speech, and mind. White, red, blue. Whom amidst rays of light that invite the wisdom beings from the inconceivable mansion of their own pure lands. They resemble Manjushri as described above and are surrounded by hosts of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. They absorb into me, and thus we become one. Offerings and praise. Ayam Padi Sahum Soha Om Maya Vaishara Sapariwa Ayam Padi Sahum Soha Om Maya Vaishara Sapariwa your pay prati sahum soha. O hum maya vagishara sapariwa. Do pay prati sahum soha. O hum maya vagishara sapariwa. Hello, K. Prati Sahum Soha. O Maria Vagishara Sapariwa. Yande Prati Sahum Soha. O Maria Vagishara Sapariwa. Nua de Padi Saum Soha. O Maria Vagishana Sapariwa. Shabta Padi Saum Soha. I make obeisance to your youthful form, O Manjushri, like that of a dynamic and graceful 16 year old. You repose upon the full moon as your cushion at the center of an expansive milk white lotus. I make obeisance to your speech, O mighty fulfiller of wishes, so malefluent to the minds of countless sentient beings, a lucent ephony to accord with each listener's capacity, its multiplicity embellishing the hearing of all unfortunate ones. O Manjushri, I make obeisance to your mind wherein is illuminated the entire tapestry of the myriad objects of knowledge. It is a tranquil ocean of unfathomable profundity, of immeasurable breadth, boundless like space itself. And we think at the heart of Manjushri 
upon a moon disk is an orange syllable D. Encircling it at the disk's periphery stands the rosary-like mantra of Om A Ra Pa Sana D. All the syllables radiate light, which gathers both wisdoms of exposition, dialectics and composition, and the wisdoms of hearing, contemplation, and meditation, which are possessed by the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Shravakas, and Pratyeka Buddhas, and the wise and learned masters of all the Buddhist and non-Buddhist traditions. And so stabilize that visualization as much as you can. So much light. So much invitation and invocation of wisdom. Om Om Mara Patsana Hadi 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 Om Arapatsana D. And we request relaxing divine pride, visualizing Manjushri front generation, as well as the Manjushri we 
are clearly appearing as, but relaxing the divine pride of. Please grant me blessings to achieve great understanding, which is able to understand and explain the meanings of extensive scriptures without resistance. Great understanding in the form of orange colored nectar beans, clarified as pure Lord Manjushri, is emitted from Manjushri, absorbs into me, fills my whole body. Then atoms of nectars, which are clarified as pure met Lord Manjushri, radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Thus the great understanding of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of the deity's holy bodies absorbs into me and fills my whole body, planting the seeds for great understanding. Omarapatsanadi, Omarapatsanadi, Omarapatsan. And we request, please grant me blessings to achieve clear wisdom, which can understand and clarify the details of very subtle and extremely difficult points without resistance. Clear wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as the syllables of the mantra, Oma Rapatsanadi is emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me and filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectars, clarified as Zamarapatsanadi, radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the clear wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of Omarapatsanadi, absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Omarapatsanadi, Omarapatsanadi, Omarapatsanadi. Omarapatsanati. We request, please grant me blessings to achieve quick wisdom, 
which quickly cuts the non-understanding and wrong understanding and doubts without resistance. And quick wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams clarified as the syllable D are emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me and filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectars clarified as the syllable D radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the quick wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of the syllable D absorbs into me and fills my whole body, firmly planting quick wisdom. Amaraptan. Om Sanati. Please grant me blessings to achieve profound wisdom that can understand and explain the meanings of scripture with depth and without resistance. Profound wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams clarified as the implements, text and sword are emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me and filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectars, clarified as the implements, radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the profound wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons, in the form of the implements, absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Planting firmly profound wisdom. Omarabatsanadi, omarabatsanadi. Please grant me blessings to achieve the wisdom to explain the Dharma, which gives definite supreme understanding of all the meanings of all the words of the scriptures without resistance. Wisdom to explain the Dharma in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as texts, are emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me and filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectar clarified as texts radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. 
thus the wisdom to explain the dharma of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of texts absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Omarapasanati, omarapasanati, Oma Rabatsana Di. Please grant me blessings to achieve debating wisdom, which enables one to achieve bravery over evil debate without resistance. Debating wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as wheels of swords, are emitted from Manjushri, absorbing into me, filling my body. Then atoms of nectars clarified as wheels of swords radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the debating wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of wheels of swords absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Omarapatsanati, omarapatsanati, omarapatsanati. Omarapatsanati. Please grant me blessings to achieve writing wisdom, which makes meaning and sound perfect and gives clear understanding and happiness. Writing wisdom in the form of orange colored nectar beams, clarified as texts and wheels of swords, are emitted from Lama Tsongkhapa, one in nature with Manjushri and his two sons, Gelsup J, Kedrup J. These texts and wheels of swords absorb into me, filling my whole body. Then atoms of nectars, clarified as texts and wheels of swords, radiate out to the victorious ones and their sons. Thus the writing wisdom of the victorious ones and their sons in the form of texts and wheels of sword, absorbs into me and fills my whole body. Omarapasanadi, omarapasanadi, omarapasanadi.
Om Arabat Sanadi. And now visualize that on your tongue is an orange syllable D, the head pointing back towards your throat. Imagine a little orange D on your tongue. And then we'll say D approximately 108 times. And as we say it, a duplicate D emanates from the D on your tongue and dissolves into the D at your heart. And after we recite the Ds, we silently swallow some saliva and imagine that the D on the tongue comes down and absorbs into the D on the moon disk at our hearts, which becomes very brilliant. Immeasurable orange light rays radiate from the D, filling your body, purifying all negative karma, sickness, and hindrances. And we then think I have received the special qualities of memory, which does not forget the words and meanings of the teachings and of knowledge of all things past, present, and future. Om Arapatsana The tea at the heart becomes very brilliant. Orange light rays radiate from it, filling our bodies, purifying. And think, I've received the special qualities of memory, which does not forget the words and meanings of the teachings and of knowledge of all things past, present, and future. And now we purify any mistakes we made during the practice. Om Vajrasattva Samaya Manupalaya Vajrasattva Deno Bhadishtha Dido Me Bhava Sudo Kaya Me Bhava Supo Kaya Me Bhava Anarakta Me Bhava Sawa Siddhi Me Prayatsa Sawa Kama Sutta Me Siddham Shriyam Kuru Hum Ha 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 Hom Bhagav Sawa Tata Gata Vajra Mame Mutsa Vajra Bhava Maha Samaya and think that the Manjushri, either that you are or is above your crown, absorbs into the mantra garland at the heart, which dissolves into light and absorbs into you. everything empty of inherent existence. And then you can arise once again as Manjushri or else just your ordinary form, but keeping awareness that you have Buddha nature or keeping awareness that you are Manjushri if you have the empowerment. And you keep a tantric mentality as you gently exit the session and we dedicate. By virtue of this practice, may I quickly accomplish the powerful attainments of Manjushri. And then may I lead all beings without exception to that supreme state. Okay, you can relax your attention. So that's the longer form of the short sadhana, long form of the short sadhana. Um, and you can do shorter form of the short sadhana 
And of course, the very shortest is just to think out of emptiness because of bodhicitta arises Manjushri. Omarapatsanadi, Omarapatsanadi, Omarapatsanadi. I dedicate for enlightenment. Done. So that's the shortest. So we'll have a um, 20 minute break. Is that enough time for you guys? And then we'll have one more session um, and we'll kind of go through a little bit more about what each syllable of the mantra means and a little bit more about the iconography. So see you 20 minutes. <laughs>